Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy. And in today's video, I'm bringing you guys week nine waiver wire ads for fantasy football in 2020. Inside of this video, we are going to be going over my top ads at the running back, wide receiver, as well as tight end positions for this week in week number nine of the 2020 fantasy football season. So make sure you guys watch the whole video to get every single player so you can get that knowledge to dominate your 2020 fantasy football league if you guys want more knowledge you want more videos you want to have another great time because i can guarantee for a fact you're gonna have a great time today so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below if you end up enjoying it real quick before we get into it i'd like to give you guys a quick word from my friends and my sponsor over at drafters.com Drafters.com offers a variety of fantasy football games as well as other sports on their website, but obviously here we mainly focus on fantasy football. One of my favorite games on here is the head-to-head -head matchup, mono e mono you draft a player, then they draft a player, then they draft another player, and then you draft, and then you draft another player. It is pretty much like having a fantasy draft. That's exactly what it is, but it's one-on-one. -on -one. They also offer three-person drafts, six-person drafts, ten-person drafts, as well as a rank'em game on drafters.com. So if you guys would like to use promo code NOTORIOUS when you go ahead and deposit some money on the website, you get a 50% deposit bonus up to $100 and a 10 times rollover on that bonus to withdraw so make sure that you guys check out drafters.com. We can even add me as a friend on there, Notorious FNTSY, and we can play some games this week. Drafters.com, code Notorious at checkout. And we are back. Let's get into it. Week 9 waiver wire ads. We begin with the running back position for this week, and that's running back Gus Edwards of the Baltimore Ravens this week, week number 9 at the Indianapolis Colts. Now, it's reported that Ingram could likely miss again this week. Now, this ad is really strictly based off of that. If Mark Ingram plays, he throws himself back into the lineup. It is a complete and utter shit show in Baltimore when Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, and Mark Ingram are all playing. There's just too many cooks in the kitchen for any successful thing to come out of this backfield every game it'll be different some games no one will produce and just the best running back on the team Lamar Jackson will end up performing Gus Edwards last week up against the Pittsburgh Steelers when Mark Ingram was out 16 rushes 87 rushing yards one total touchdown one target that didn't amount to anything 14.7 PPR points and 14.7 half PPR points Plain and simple, this guy looks excellent, and having a running back on the Baltimore Ravens when he is potentially the starter on the week is amazing because of how good the offensive line is and how good the scheme is for the Baltimore Ravens to get the ball onto the ground and out of Lamar Jackson's hand, considering this guy is just a pick machine as of recently. So I think Gus Edwards plays good this week up against the Indianapolis Colts as long as Mark Ingram ends up missing this one, even though the Indianapolis Colts defense is pretty solid up against the run next guy here the other running back in the same game for the same team just kidding Dobbins JK Dobbins running back of the Baltimore Ravens week nine again up against the Indianapolis Colts because the Baltimore Ravens play the Colts Ingram likely could miss again that's the report we'll see today on Tuesday I'll report down below in the comments if it seems like oh Mark Ingram's definitely gonna play then you scratch these guys and you go with the next couple of guys that I'm going to be talking about week eight versus the Pittsburgh Steelers just like with Gus Edwards very productive 15 rushes 130 13 rushing yards, one reception on two targets for eight receiving yards, 13.1 PPR points and 12.6 half PPR points. Now, Gus Edwards did end up outscoring J.K. Dobbins, but that does not deflate J.K. Dobbins' value like a football in Indianapolis if you're a Patriot. So, both of these guys are definitely worthy of adding this week as long as Mr. Big Trust, woo woo, Marky Mark Ingram does not end up showing up to town and fucking your day up. So, let's hope Let's not actually hope because I never hope for injury, but in the case, if Ingram misses, these two guys are the key ads of this number week, this week for some big success in week number nine. Next running backs to talk about, guess what? We got the two running backs of the Indianapolis Colts week nine playing up against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Taylor is dealing with a little bit of an ankle injury in air quotes, a little bit. What does that mean? What does that mean? They tell us at the end of the game that he was banged up. He never left the game. So I don't know. Was Did he come into the week with the injury? Did it happen during the game? Who knows? Wilkins outsnapped Jonathan Taylor 39-226. So Wilkins was very, very involved in this game. Wilkins up against the Detroit Lions last week. 20 rushes for 98 rushing yards. One touchdown, one reception on one target. 24 receiving yards, 20.3 PPR points, and 19.8 half PPR points. So he's worthy of an ad even if Jonathan Taylor is healthy next week, but I assume when you have a little bit of an ankle injury and for some reason you're not playing a majority of the snaps on the team, 
that you were drafted to be the number one guy for when Marlon Mack is fucking gone, I would expect that Jordan Wilkins still sees a heavy dosage of carries this week up against the Baltimore Ravens, regardless of if Taylor is good to go or not. Next guy here, we got a running back in the exact same game, Naheem Hines, running back of the Indianapolis Colts, week nine versus the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Hines was nowhere near as involved as Wilkins was in this game. And Naheem Hines kind of feels like that player where it's fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't get fooled again. Fool me three times, fuck me in the ass. Because that's what it feels like Naheem Hines is going to do. He fooled us week one with a little bit of trickery. He did his best Houdini impression, and he played amazing week one. And then after that was a complete and utter dumpster fire. Everyone paid up so much money. Naheem Hines is going to be amazing. This, that, the other thing. Naheem Hines is running back too. This, that, all of it. And he was not that. But last week, he looked very good. So I'm not trying not to get fooled again, as they would say in that saying. But I think he may be worth it again. Now, I do like Wilkins a lot more, but I like Naheem Hines' celebration more. I don't know if you guys saw him score those two tutties. The man did a cartwheel into a backflip. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know why these players do those crazy-ass celebrations. Like, is it really worth trying to potentially get hurt doing this sick-ass celebration? But I respect it. It almost makes me want to add Naheem Hines more. If you're in a point-per-celebration league, I like Hines a little bit better. Week 8 at the Detroit Lions, he saw much less carries, but scored more points due to having more touchdowns, which resulted in 21.2 PPR points as well as 19.7 half PPR points. So Naheem Hines had quite the day, to say the least. Both of these running backs did an Eiffel Tower on that Detroit Lions defense, pumping it till they absolutely ejaculated all over that Detroit Lions defense. They had him looking like Mia Malkova back there as the defense. So I really like Naheem Hines as well this week. Not ultra concerned with Taylor being super healthy because when you get a little bit of an ankle injury now I expect Jonathan Taylor to finish the season strong and I don't expect Jonathan Taylor to have been a bust this season because I think he's going to start picking it up but it is definitely worthy of an ad especially if you are the Jonathan Taylor owner next running back here and final running back is Damian actually just kidding there's one more after this Damian Harris running back of the New England Deflatriates going up against the New York football Jets this week in Gotham Damian Harris is going to run a absolute fucking train on the New York football Giants this week and I are New York football Jets this week and there is no doubt about it the Jets defense sucks cock Damian Harris has been blowing the back out of defenses two weeks in a row James White seems to be the cuck in the corner watching as Damian Harris pounds the defense to death week eight at the Buffalo Bills 16 rushes 102 yards and one total tuggy for 16.2 PPR points as well as half PPR points the only worry obviously about Damian Harris is that this guy gets zero use in the receiving game they don't even look for it but they do like to run the ball a lot in New England and running with Damian Ian Harris has been proved to be very, very productive for the team, so I expect him to get a heavy dosage of work here up against one of the worst defenses in the NFL and one of the worst teams in the NFL. Not one of the, the worst team in the NFL in the New York Football Jets. So final running back here is Philip Lindsay, running back of the Denver Broncos. Week 9, going up against the Denver Broncos, but I'm not too sure that's possible. But it is somewhat realistic because this man is fighting tooth and nail every week to get touches when he's 90 times better than fucking Melvin Gordon and they just don't give it to him. This week going up against the actual Atlanta Falcons, one of the worst defenses in the NFL week eight versus the Los Angeles Chargers. Probably would have, uh, the Clippers might have had a better chance if Kawhi fucking suited up on defense because the defense keeps choking on some fat hog late in the game for the LA Chargers. Six rushes for Mr. Lindsay in this one for 83 rushing yards. This guy, what? He gashed open the defense of the Chargers like his name was O.J. Simpson. One touchdown, one reception on three targets, three receiving yards, 15.6 PPR points, and 15.1 half PPR points in this game. So Philip Lindsay, while he isn't the guaranteed starter, He's playing better than Gordon when he's healthy. You can not go. That goes without saying. He looks so much better than Melvin Gordon. Passes the eye test. Pass, passes the nerd test as well, which is when you look at the fucking stats because you're a fucking nerd and you look at the stats. He also looks better on paper. So if something was to happen to Melvin Gordon, if the team realizes that Philip Lindsay's better, which they should, then Lindsay will definitely be worthy of an ad. He's definitely worthy of a stash for this week. Now, Onto the wide receiver part of the video. So if you guys have ended up enjoying thus far, we're about nine-ish minutes in. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. First wide receiver here is Christian Kirk, wide receiver of the Arizona Cardinals. Week nine at the Arizona Cardinals, which is impossible because he's actually playing up against my Miami Dolphins. They had a bye last week, so his most recent game was up against the Seattle Seahawks. That extravagant Sunday night or Monday night football game 
from last week. Five receptions, eight targets, 37 yards, not one, but two tutties in that one. 20.7 PPR points and 18.2 half PPR points. This matchup does kind of scare me up against Miami. Those corners there are ferocious, but Christian Kirk has been eating defenses for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and fucking dessert, and second dessert as well because he's feasting like his name was Ezekiel Elliott. Christian Kirk has been scoring touchdowns on the regular two weeks in a row, so I think Christian Kirk here is in for another big one up against the Dolphins and this Arizona offense versus Miami. I think this is going to be a decently high scoring game. Next game here, our next player here is Marvin Jones, wide receiver of the Detroit Lions this week, going up against the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota, who just recently slayed A.A. Ron Rodgers. Week 9 here, and it is sad. Pain. Champagne without the Shah, just pain. Kenny Galladay will miss week nine. And he still has not gotten the bag, still hasn't gotten the contract, which could result in him sitting out for the rest of the season. Or maybe just him sitting out a couple more weeks then, because he doesn't really have to miss like fucking three games for the injury he has. It should be like a two game miss. But it seems like it's going to be more, and Marvin Jones has been eating. Marvin Jones sucked fucking ass. The first couple weeks of the season. This guy looked like the biggest bust on your lineup. He looked terrible. There was like no reason for you to have had drafted him. He looked completely different to what he looked like last year. And now he's catching flame. He's caught the flint to the goddamn steel. And the shit's on fire. Week 8 at the Detroit Lions. But that's impossible. Because for some reason the graphics department over here. A.K.A. me who makes these graphics. Needs to be fucking fired. He's playing the. He played the Colts last week. And it was a... Kind of difficult matchup, but the guy stood up to the occasion and scored two tutties in this game on three receptions with seven targets, 39 receiving yards again, two touchdowns, 18.9 PPR points, and 17.4 half PPR points. So Marvin Jones seems to be the clear number one wide receiver now without Kenny Bones. How successful will he be is the question. Early in the season, when Kenny Galladay was gone, he did nothing. He was just watching from the sideline as the other players were scoring points, but now he has emerged and became the same guy he was deep in the last season and pretty much all last year. So I like Marvin Jones here going up against a not-so-hot Minnesota Vikings defense. We're going to have a Viking funeral at the end of this one at the hands of Marvin Jones. Next guy here is Sterling Shepard, wide receiver of the New York football Giants. Week 9 gets the Washington football team in Washington. This week, week 8, he played up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home in New York. Shepard in this one had a huge amount of targets, 10 targets, 8 receptions, 74 yards, and 15.4 PPR points. Now, I know you might be concerned, hey, that's up, uh, that's, well, actually, you shouldn't be concerned at all, because that's up against the Bucks. The Bucks have a very good defense. Daniel Jones does not look very good, but Sterling Shepard looked very good in this game, and he seems to be very, very involved in this offense, so even though the Giants suck, I think he'll be pretty good up against the Washington football team and is likely the number one wide receiver on the New York football Giants. Next guy, the Lazard King, Alan Lazard, wide receiver of the Green Bay Packers. Week 9, going up against the San Francisco 49ers that are absolutely depleted because Big Dick Nick Mullins is going to be starting quarterback. He could play this week, is the report. Could play this week. Now, it's not a lock that he plays this week. It's not. Not at all. But he practiced last week. Could play this week. This is a great matchup if he plays, but even if he doesn't play, he's definitely worthy of a roster spot. Last game he played was week number three up against the New Orleans Saints. He had six receptions for eight tar- on eight targets, 146 receiving yards, one touchdown, 26.4 PPR points, and 23.4 half PPR points. So I think Lazard here is going to be very dangerous for the Green Bay Packers when he comes back now. Obviously, Devontae Adams is still there, but Alan Lazard has a big mouth that's going to get fed. By Mr. Discount Double Check. A.A. Ron Rogers once he's healthy and good to go. Next guy here we got Jalen Rager. Wide receiver of the Philadelphia Eagles. Missed a bunch of games in a row. Returned from injury week 8 up against the Dallas Cowboys. This week he's on a bye. So he's definitely a stash candidate. Because you're not going to be playing him up against the bye week. Because you're not going to score any points. Week 8 versus the Dallas Cowboys. Three receptions. Six targets. 16 yards. One tutty. 13.2 PPR points at 11.7 half PPR points. Now, it's very clear that Jalen Rager is nowhere near the number one wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. He may be in the future. But right now, Travis Fulgham has a stranglehold on that wide receiver one spot. That guy is completely alpha for the team, but Jalen Rager does look like he is going to get a decent amount of targets in the future, so I like Rager here as a nice stash. And final wide receiver here, we got a nice guy that you put in the lineup, and you just look up to the heavens and say, Fantasy Lord, please! Let him score a touchdown. 
please let Patrick Mahomes look his way because Patrick Mahomes either looks this guy's way like twice or like 10 total fucking times. This week, Mr. McColl gets the Carolina Panthers, who actually looked pretty all right on defense last week, but lost to the choke artist, the Atlanta Falcons, Mecole Hardman, week eight at the New York Football Jets. Seven receptions, nine targets, 96 receiving yards, one touchdown, 22.6 PPR points, and 19.1 half PPR points. Would I be confident starting McCole Hardman? Fuck no. But if you have the cojones to do it, if you got the balls to do it, then do it. Because he has the upside of individually winning you your week, but he also has the opportunity to do the reverse, use no lube on you, and row you into the ass, into the nighttime. So now, onto the tight end part of the video. So again, if you guys have ended up enjoying, I try not to ask a million times, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Eric Ebron, tight end of the Pittsburgh Steelers, week 9. This is the reason why I like him. He's going up against the bum-ass Dallas Cowboys in Jerry's world. The Pittsburgh Steelers are undefeated. The Dallas Cowboys could not beat a JV football team. Week 8 versus the Ravens. Four receptions, five targets, 48 receiving yards, one tutty, 14.8 PPR points, and 12 point something half PPR points. So the issue with Ebron Kind of touchdown dependent, but recently has been scoring the touchdowns. Deontay Johnson might not play. That guy's just a walking injury problem. So Eric Ebron suits in for a really, really big spot this week up against a very bad defense in the NFL in the Dallas Cowboys. And final player of the video, tight end Logan Thomas going up against the New York football giants of the Washington football team. He scored a tutty in his last two games. The last game he played was week seven up against the Dallas Cowboys because last week they had a bye. Four for four, four receptions, four targets like he was at Wendy's. 60 receiving yards, one tutty, 16 PPR points, and 14 half PPR points. So Logan Thomas seems to be the real deal. I thought he was early in the season, then he sucked. Now he's been good recently. So I'll fire him up again, up against a Giants defense that looked very good. I'm going to be honest, they look very good this week, but that's probably just because Tom Brady goes into mental warfare up against himself, firing back and forth with his own fucking brain when he has to play up against the New York football Giants because we all know how it went in the Super Bowl the last two times they played. So thank you guys all for watching. Make sure that if you did end up enjoying again, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Check out drafters.com, code notorious at checkout. I love each and every single one of you beautiful bastards, and I can't wait to see you guys later with another banger of a video. As always, have a great rest of your guys' day. Stay safe. Good boy!